Jesus really, I've been reading in Luke 8 and for the last couple weeks and he's been really ministering to me and I'm hoping that I can communicate that and that you get blessed as much as I have been getting so blessed. So I'm just praying that Jesus gives me the right words and I, what he wants to do, the bottom line, is to give you some hope for your friends that aren't saved yet or family um, or that they're saved but they're really not benefiting from Christ and we want them to benefit and so I believe Jesus really wants to impart hope to you today because um, you know I believe the forefront of this church where we're going is going to be evangelism I believe that we're going to be focusing on saving the lost and this harvest boy is it ripe so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read halfway through and I want you to read with me in Luke 8 and then I'm going to go over and kind of break it down and give you what God's been talking to me about okay so if you haven't had your Bible this week we're going to have some Bible okay so this is Jesus heals a demon possessed man so they arrived in a region of the and I, I can't pronounce this so Gerasenes across the lake from Galilee as Jesus was climbing out of the boat a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him for a long time he had been homeless and naked living in a cemetery outside the town as soon as he saw Jesus he shrieked and fell down in front of him Then he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. This spirit had often taken control of the man. Even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles, he simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness completely under the demon's power. Jesus demanded, What is your name? Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons begged him to let him enter into the pigs. So Jesus gave him permission. It says, um, Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and and the entire herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned. Oh, we won't read all of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Whoops. Oh, sorry. Okay, Bob's ears are a little bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, you know, to read in context, you have to, what I do when I read a chapter, so I look ahead and I look after, just to kind of get the full context. And so, before Jesus came over to this place, he was with his disciples, he had ministered a lot, and so he was tired. Jesus took a nap. How many times do you read that in the Bible? Jesus took a nap. He was human, but he took a nap. Not only did he take a nap, he took a nap in the middle of a storm that was raging and they were so fearful that they were going to drown. Jesus was sleeping through that. Now that's tired, right? No. I think he just wasn't afraid. But he was tired. The disciples woke him up and he says, where is your faith? And he calmed the wind. He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the waves and they stopped. And then they were terrified. Who is this man that can stop the wind? Have you ever tried to stop the wind? <laughs> I was thinking about that. I hate it when the wind is blowing my hair all over. <laughs> I would love to, it's like, stop that. Wouldn't that be cool? I mean, can you though, just put, yeah, uh, when I read a story, I always try to get in it, right? Like, cause this really happened. It's so easy just to read a story and just think it's a story, but it really happened. I think I'd be a little terrified too. All of a sudden, the wind just stopped. The waves just stopped. Okay, so there's the setting. So he's coming over to this lake with his disciples. And it says, 
As he was getting out of his boat, here comes this demonic man running up to him. I mean, he didn't even get out of his car. You know, I mean, it, as he's getting out of the boat, here we go, right? Here comes this man. It says he was homeless and naked. Now, you don't have to picture that. I got one. <laughs> I got a picture for you. <laughs> now, I did have a couple pictures in mind that was really scary, and it was a very demonic looking man. I mean, I mean, really scary, and I was worried about um, the Lions boys seeing this, so I thought I better not show that. But, oh, fooey. Anyway, so. Um, but I thought, you know, this man could be our brother. I mean, if he was too scary looking, he wouldn't be our brother. But this man, you know, he could be your uncle or something. There's people out there that are lost. And you know the name of this town, um, Gerasenes or whatever you want to pronounce it? What, I looked it up. What it means is a stranger drawing near. Now, I don't know if it's the Jesus is the stranger drawing near or this demonic man is the stranger drawing near. I don't know. You guys can make up your mind. I'm not sure. But here comes this guy running up to him. And it says he's been this way for a long time. I have people out there that I know that have been lost without benefiting from Jesus for a long time. This guy's been this way for a long time. You know what's weird? I was thinking about this. Now, did the demons, I don't think the demons knew that this was Jesus when he came up. Because I don't know, why would Jesus lead a man to Jesus? You know, why would demons lead him to Jesus? I'm not so sure. They recognized him. They, they came up. He came up, and then he said, he, he shrieked, and then he fell down and screamed. And then he said, why have you come? Have you come before your time when you're going to torture me? So I don't know if the demons knew ahead of time that this was Jesus. Well, I don't know. Anyway, so you could th wonder, did these demons lead this guy to Jesus, you know, in a sense? I don't know. Just something to think about. This is what goes through my brain when I read. He says, as soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked. Does anybody want to shriek? No. No? Okay. And fell down in front of him. Then, and then he screamed. So the shriek is different than the scream. He says, why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? You know, he knew who he was. Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. And it says the spirit had often taken control of the man. So does that mean they didn't at some other times? Was he in his right mind at other times? I don't know. But it said they often took control of this man. And he was placed under guard with chains and shackles. He simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness, completely under the demon's power. Then, you know, Jesus asked him, what's your name? And he said, Legion. He said, because we're filled, there's, there's lots of us in here. The demons kept begging Jesus, don't send us to the bottomless pit. They did not want to go there. They were begging, don't send us there, please. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby. Now, this is, they said in another book, 2,000 pigs, a herd of 2,000. That's a lot. Yeah. And I was thinking, I don't think this was a Jewish community or, you know, because they didn't eat pigs. And so here's this huge, huge herd, 2,000 pigs. This is all I could find. <laughs> I wanted to give you a picture of 2,000 pigs, you know. But, okay, but... So this guy's living, actually it says in a cemetery by the burial caves, and then there's this herd of 2,000 pigs. And you know who's watching this? It's the herdsmen that are taking care of all these pigs. Now can you just imagine with me for a while 
they're watching from afar and they see this boat of guys coming and they're probably talking, boy, they have no idea who they're going to run into. You know, let's look at this. You know. <laughs> Here comes this ah, crazy guy, right? And uh, so they're watching and then all of a sudden they see this guy fall on the ground. They're going, that's kind of weird. This guy's falling on the ground. They're watching. And then I imagine they see Jesus' arm going like this. And then all of a sudden, the pigs start moving. <laughs> He's pointing towards the pigs, right? And all of a sudden, thousands of pigs just start running, right? Off this cliff. <laughs> <laughs> And this cliff doesn't have to look exactly like this, but something like this, right? You've got to be there. I mean, can you imagine? This is a real story. This really happened. 2,000 pigs, all of a sudden, whoosh, diving down into the water. I imagine these herdsmen running over there, looking down in the water, and it says the, the pigs drowned which is really bothers me. I think, why would demons want to kill? I mean, they want to live in something. Why would they want to live in something and then kill it? Then where'd they go? I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> anyway, so maybe they stayed in the water. That's why I don't like what, no. Anyway, so here they are looking at all these pigs. And they're probably floating up to the top, right? So 2,000 pigs. Floating. That, that's weird. This is weird. This is a scary story. It says they were terrified. I'll read it. It says, when the herdsmen saw it. Oh, maybe I have it here. Oh, there it is. It says, when the herdsmen saw it, they fled to the nearby town. They fled. That means running fast. <laughs> to a town surrounding countryside spreading the news as they ran. I mean, they're, they're probably not even hardly stopping. You wouldn't believe what happened, and they're just running, telling the story. All those pigs, this demon, you know, the demon died, this guy in the cemetery, and he runs, and the pigs, and they're all dead. And you know, I mean, he's just, they're running, they're like, you wouldn't believe that guy, right? So people rushed out to see. They had to see what happened. So they go out there. The cr a crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been freed from the demons. They saw him. What was he doing? He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully clothed, so they gave him some clothes, perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. How did they know he was perfectly sane? I was imagining this. I bet Jesus was sitting on a rock, right? Because there's big rocks around there. And, and this guy's sitting at his feet, fully clothed. And I was imagining what the, he was talking about. He was probably saying, I have never felt this good in all my life. I am so thankful that you came to me. I've never felt this good in all my life. I'm so free. Thank you so much for saving me. I mean, what were they talking about? How did they know he was sane? They're probably saying things. He's probably saying that. I have a life now. So they saw the man who had been, and they were terrified. Then those who had seen what happened told the others how the demon-possessed man had been healed. All the people in the region of the Gerasenes begged Jesus, begged him. I haven't begged in a long time. <laughs> I've seen some kids begging their moms in the store, can we, can we have this? But here they are, begging Jesus to leave them alone. It says, a great wave of fear swept over them all. Over them all. 
is they were begging him to leave. Doesn't it sound kind of familiar? That's what the demons were doing. Leave. Don't please don't be here. That sounds kind of familiar. I'm not saying they're demon possessed, but they were so afraid. Isn't that strange? Isn't it strange to be that afraid? I've, I thought, I don't know, if, would I be that afraid? Is it because it's so supernatural? What is it? Why are they so afraid? <coughs> Does anybody know? <coughs> so Jesus returned to the boat and left, crossing back to the other side of the lake. The man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him back home. I'll stop for just a minute. So at the beginning of the story, we saw as Jesus is getting out of the boat, here comes this demon-possessed man. What do you want with me? Get away from me! And now the story ends. As Jesus is getting into the boat, he said, please, I want to go with you. What a transformation in just an afternoon. In maybe, what, an hour? What a transformation. He's begging, please, can I go with you? Please, I want to serve you. I want to be with you. I never want to be apart from you. You have helped me, delivered me, healed me. And then Jesus turns to him and says, No, go to your family. And that hit me. I started crying. Oh, because I have some people that are really close to me that I'd love them to, I'd love them to hear. I'd love to hear from them saying, Mom, Mona, guess what God did for me? <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. God is going to do that. Amen. God is going to do that because he's just that good. Amen. He's just that good. To go out of his way for this one man, this whole town didn't want anything to do with him, but this one demonic man that was so buried. Now, like I said, I didn't know if he had times of sameness where he was going for maybe a minute. Ah, oh, would somebody tell me? You know, I don't know. Or I don't, I don't even know if he heard of God or if he had any faith. Now, because we think, oh, because it's so funny. The next um, chapter, it says, Jesus heals in response to faith. Well, was this guy healed in response to his faith? Did he have any faith? I don't think he did. Do you? I don't think he did. I don't even think he was thinking about God. And this is what got me. Here he is buried with demons. And there's a little part of him in there. And Jesus came for that. He came for that. He came for that man. He recognized there's a soul in there that I love and I want. I want. <laughs> there are people that he wants saved that are not even buried with demons. It's possible, yeah. right? Yeah. If this man is full of demons to get saved, isn't it possible for your neighbor or your co-worker to get saved that's not buried in demons? That has a little faith, maybe? Yeah. It's possible. And go to your family. Ah, tell them what God has done for you. Wow. So he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. He probably never got tired of telling that story. What a testimony, a transformation he was to that whole town. Boy. I don't have any more to say. <laughs> I, but it really encouraged me. It encouraged me. I mean, did you get into the story? Could you see it? Okay, so you tell me, why did those pigs die? <laughs> Where did those demons go? <laughs> okay, Joey. 
Yeah. And so I think they were just scrambling there thinking of any little thing they could do to hold on because they didn't want to face, uh, you know, just saying, okay, I give up, you know. Uh huh. And so thinking irrationally. Yeah, and just holding on to that, that just anything, you know, and then we do that when we, you know, when we're back in the corner, we did, did, have done something wrong and we're trying to hold on to. That, that little glimmer of anything or scrambling and mm -hmm. really, but the only thing that we need to do is just give up and say, you know, Jesus, you, you know, what, do you, what, what can you, you know, I can't do anything. You, you know, fix it. Yeah, you do it. Yeah. Why do you think they were, the whole town was so afraid? Why do you think that was, do you think that he, Jesus was going to do that to them? Why do you think they were so afraid, Linda? Yeah. And so they were just used to the same old, same old. And then when they saw the miraculous power, that they, they feared that. Because it never came to me to God's experience, that grace. And even the guy when he kept saying, Did he have any faith? He probably had it. Do you think he knew something? He was different. And he knew he was in agony. And he wanted out of that agony. But again, when he Presence of the Father God, boom, God gave him that faith. Yeah. Yeah. How many have experienced their levels and degrees of the supernatural? And and so there's kind of a kind of mild, low level. And then there's the real blatant, obvious, higher level. And I don't know, I'll let you know that being a believer all my life. Once you get into a situation where you're you're seeing and experiencing something that you can't explain any other way, but this has to be supernatural. It is shocking. You know, it it, it sets it does something to you. It really does, and I, it definitely is on the town. So the go ahead. So the meaning of the town, a stranger draws near. Who do you think the stranger was? Was it Jesus drawing near to the man, or was it the man drawing near to Jesus? Isn't that funny about that name? Yeah. What a quick, quick transformation, though. You want to say something? Well, at the beginning, you're talking about when the demons were afraid of being tortured. Even they were afraid of being tortured. So, I don't know how to say it. To them, it's normal. But now they're even afraid of being more tortured. I when I first read it years ago, I could never just why were they afraid of being more tortured? Mm -hmm. They're already demon possessed. So, is there? I used to think, well, is there another level of more torture? You know, I don't, I don't I want no more torture from Satan. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Of, they were afraid of being tortured. The word's alive. Yeah. Chris, you have something? Emmanuel, you have something? Come on. No, I don't have. <laughs> Maybelline? No. I think it was an interesting story. Do you have something, Diane? Well, I've always thought that what makes us think demons have any smarts? Yeah. Uh, there's nothing smart about them. Uh, and then also, I think a lot of it was there was some fear uh, because their economic base was taken away. Those herdsmen had all those pigs yeah. to sell. Yeah. And here, all their livelihood went down the drain, so to speak. Yep, I thought of that too. Um, you know, so you'd get afraid. What would a good sized pig go for in our day? Abraham would know because he buys them. I feel like you're going to feed all our money. You're going to be feeding high school? Is Abraham or? He was out with a baby. That was a long time. Well, 2,000 times that. My wife wants a, a miniature pig, and those are going anywhere from 800 to a couple thousand dollars. Okay. Wow. So now we're getting with at least $400,000 going over the edge of the cliff. <laughs> Yay. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. 
disciple. Um, how a person who doesn't know the Lord and um, is tormented by being in possession of the suicide sometimes because mm -hmm. they don't know mm -hmm. how they can come to the Lord. And it's like, hey, they're just, they're yeah. you know, just, they just went, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so it's just a reminder that he is there for those people and we're that light. Mm -hmm. And he had a family. Maybe his family was praying for him. He had a family, it said. And he had been that way a long time. I mean, how sad. He was somebody's son. Uh, I'm still on the praying on the praying in the spirit. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm still captivated by that. Uh, one thing that I do know is that demons, they don't like wet places. They like dry places. They want it to be dry. So something, something happened in those pigs where I don't think it was the demons trying to get to the water, it was the pigs trying to get to the water. <laughs> they knew they could not swim. And, <laughs> so the demons run into the water and now all of a sudden they're free from the demon. Like, you know, I can't really explain that, but I will say this, that God says that uh, he was talking to that woman that came to the well and he told her that, you know, I have water. They're not going to thirst again. And God was ministering to me that, you know, just the different things in our lives, even people that might have vices and addictions, you know, that's a different water that we keep coming back to. We're feeling that that's going to satisfy us. But only the Holy Spirit is the water that will never, you'll never go thirsty again. You just, you keep getting more filled and more filled and more filled. So, again, I want to encourage this church, because this church is alive, to pray in the Spirit more and more. You know, start that gift of God in you because. That is the rivers of living water that's going to come out of your core and bless other people. And it's going to bless people in a way that's not going to bless them. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not going to bless them in the same way that life has been blessing them. Because they keep getting thirsty. There's something that's missing. It's something that's empty. and something that's void about life. But you are uh, this vessel that God wants to use. And he wants rivers of living water to come out of you. And, and to bless those people that need to be saved. They need that refreshing. They need that that living water, because there's a lot of waters, but this living water. So keep praying the Spirit, serve that gift of God, and remember, the demons don't, they don't like wet places. Yeah. So the more you pray in the Spirit, the more you're not going to have the influence over your life. You know what I mean? They're going to be staying far from you. So I do want to encourage everybody in that. Maybe we can do that, Cheryl. After Cheryl, maybe we can all stand up and pray in tongues. But think of the people that you would like to see come to you and say, you wouldn't believe what God has done for me. Maybe we, can we do that after Cheryl? Okay. This is just a thought moment um, when we were talking. I was thinking about the pigs and how um, the Jews considered pigs to be unclean. Yeah. And I was thinking the demons would want to go somewhere Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. I would like to know where I would like to where the demons went to. And they floated in the I don't know either. Ah, it's so good. Jesus is so good to go all the way over there. Save that guy. Let's all stand up.